Well, hello everybody. It is Marguerite here and I am very, very pleased to be with you today. I'm really excited in fact. This is the most comprehensive content filled webinar I have ever, ever done and um, I am just really excited to be sharing the content with you today. Now in case you're not already aware, today's webinar is in fact going to be three hours long and I have so much content embedded in this presentation. Normally I give this presentation live and it takes me six hours. So um, I am known for really over delivering and possibly I'm guilty of overwhelming people. So if you all haven't already got a pen and paper, please go and grab a pen and paper now. Okay, um, in case you don't know, too much about me if you've come from somewhere other than my list. Um, I am a life coach, a healer, um, a, a transformation expert, loving the law of attraction and I have immersed myself in this, in this um, information for the last 10 to 15 years. Um, for, before that, uh, I was in the corporate world, um, and you know, I jumped from job to job to job to job. They were good jobs. I just hated them pretty much. They were soul destroying for me. Meanwhile, I was studying to be an opera singer and training to be an opera singer. I just, I loved it so much. It was. Um, it was my ultimate joy was to sing. So I knew that this was what I was supposed to be doing was singing and I pursued it doggedly. Like give me something that I am passionate about and I never give up. I will die chasing it um, or die pursuing it's probably a better word. Chasing it's not a good word. Um, and um, I did. I pursued it just with a vengeance. I, I ne left no stone unturned. But uh, with, the, with the opera, doors just kept slamming in my face. And ultimately, I, I was heartbroken, absolutely heartbroken. No matter what I did, people loved to hear me sing, but I just didn't have what it takes to really break into the opera world. And I, I'm not alone. There are thousands upon thousands of opera singers out there who just can't get a break. It's a very, very competitive industry and it's such a shame that so many talented people don't get a break. But that wasn't to be my future. Now while I was chasing the the opera, the opera um, career, I was um, looking for ways to get out of the corporate world. I just couldn't do it anymore and finally I really did hit the wall and went, that's it. I cannot do these jobs anymore. They're just soul destroying for me. So much to my husband's anxiety, I um, walked away. All this time I was into personal development, doing loads of personal development. Um, I walked away from my corporate job and look, we had um, four houses at that stage. We were building our property portfolio. So we had a hell of a lot of financial commitments and me walking away like that was not actually a very smart idea. Um, I had become a personal trainer so I was starting my personal training business and that's all good but you know what it's like getting a new business up and running. It's a, it can be tough and it wasn't going as fast as I would like. So I was still pursuing the opera at that time. I was working hard trying to become a personal trainer. Um, my husband, believe it or not, also quit his job and started a brand new business. So we've got two brand new businesses. We didn't go into business together. He went into a brand new business and I was into another new business, the personal training. Um, at the same time, we were both doing personal development work and we both discovered EFT at the same time simultaneously. I went in this incredible um, journey where I was picked up, shaken, turned around 180 degrees by the universe um, as far as the singing is concerned and found out that I was a master sound healer. Now this came as a massive surprise to me. No more more of a surprise to me than anybody, I think. Everybody else seemed to go, wow, that's really cool. We kind of knew there was something about you. And I'm just still shaking. For years, I was still shaking my head going, what on earth is this? <laughs> 
I didn't want to accept it. I denied it. I tried everything not to actually do it, believe it or not. Yes, I love to sing, but this was just a bit too freaky for me. I did not want to own it, which was, um, look, I could call it a mistake, but it wasn't so much a mistake as um, it was just, uh, some, as it was the journey that I was going on. So okay, so we've got two new businesses, we've both quit our jobs, we've got a portfolio of four houses, you can probably guess where I'm going with this. Um, this was uh, seven years ago and we were in a bit of a pickle because our businesses were not bringing in the kind of money that we were bringing in from our, our jobs, our respective jobs and we had huge commitments. Um, and. Uh, we were getting pretty desperate. So long story short, after denying all of my um, all of my gifts for so long, and you know we we hung in there for four years doing what we were doing, but it was a struggle. Eventually, we were living in um, New South Wales in Australia, which is kind of toward the bottom end of Australia, the bottom half of Australia. We both came from Queensland and I just got to the point where that's it, I want to go home, I've had enough. So we both packed up everything that we, we had, we sold everything that we had um, and, and we moved back to Queensland, best thing we ever did. Um, and just now we live in a place called Tambourine Mountain, that's actually a photo um, in a friend's backyard on Tambourine Mountain. It's a beautiful, it's just God's country up here. It is so glorious and wonderful. Um, and we are happier than we have ever been. My husband and I have been together for almost 21 years now, married for 18. And um, we really are happier than we have ever been up here on the mountain. We have our house up here. We are now looking to um, build a, um, a, a property with a healing centre on it. And man, this is just the best time of my life. This really is the best time of my life. And I get to do what I love and share this information with you guys. And you know what? Life wasn't meant to be a struggle. It wasn't meant to be difficult. We made it that way. And I speak from experience. Man, I created the hugest struggles in my life that almost destroyed my relationship and my marriage. Um, it almost brought my husband undone completely and I'm not going to go into much of that because that's pretty personal but um, it was it was very very testing what we put ourselves through and you know we created it we create our own reality so um, that's kind of a bit of my background and now I get to do what I love every day working with people sharing my expertise and my information helping people have breakthroughs and it is just the most rewarding life ever and you can have that too not necessarily doing what I'm doing if that's what you want to do then yes you can have that too um, but doing whatever your mission is. We all come here with a mission and I'm going to talk more about that very, very soon. But um, which, you know, I better get onto the content because as I said, I do have a lot to share. So that's just a little bit of my background, guys. And okay. All right. What I want to ask you is are you really ready to transform your life? And this brings a little bit of controversy up because I know just about every single one of you out there, if not every single one of you out there, will go, yes, yes, I'm ready to transform my life. Absolutely. I am so ready. I'm over ready. I've been ready for years and years and years. The thing is that lots of people think they're ready. But when it gets difficult or inconvenient or... Um, or something comes up that blocks them from moving forward, then they, they don't do what it takes. They don't push past that barrier. They don't become resourceful enough to get over that particular challenge. If you are really ready to transform your life, then you will do whatever it takes. That's what I'm talking about. Are you really ready to do whatever it takes, no matter what? 
because it's not about your resources, it's about your resourcefulness. And most people say, well, I don't have the money or I don't have the time or um, there's just too much going on in my life at the moment, I'm too distracted, I've got all these commitments. If you really want to transform your life, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tip. Your ducks are never going to all line up in a row. It is never going to be convenient to be successful. You will always have challenges. You will always have reasons why not to. And I'm not saying they're not legitimate reasons, guys. Far from it. I know how it is. I know how difficult it can be. I've just told you. I've been there. But the point is, if you're really ready to transform your life, then you will find a way. And you will do it no matter what. And for it's different for everybody. But I really want you to think about that question. Are you really ready to transform your life, to face all your fears, to overcome all your obstacles, no matter what they are, and to move forward with confidence and um, fast, to move forward fast? This is not a dress rehearsal. This is... You only get one chance at this life. I believe we have many lifetimes, but you only get one chance at this one. Don't waste it. How long have you been treading water? Okay, so I'm going to get off my soapbox. <laughs> I get a little bit passionate about this stuff. Um, okay, now how to get the most out of this training. Firstly, I'd like you to forget what you know. Now, what you mean by this, what I mean by this is, I go to plenty of workshops and seminars and presentations and webinars and all that kind of thing. And um, I know that I have an ego and my ego comes with me. And sometimes that ego will just sit there, arms crossed, going, yep, I know that. Yep, I know that. Heard that. Done that. Been there. That's not the way you learn. And I know when I can actually check my ego at the door and just be open to the information that's coming. I go to webinars where, you know, 90% of the information I've heard before, but somebody will say something that I that in a different way, and I've never heard it said that way before, and all of a sudden I'll have an aha moment. Or they'll put together the information in a way that I've never seen it before, and it'll just create a breakthrough for me. And there will be some nuggets in there that make a massive difference and help you to step up to the next level. But if I go in going, yeah, heard that, been there, done that, then I'm not open to learning. It's it's really um, your your willingness to learn right here, right now is really, really important. And I know that most of you are already there and I'm speaking to the converted. So I just wanted to remind you, a lot of this information, if you've been on this journey for a while, you will have heard a lot of it before. But there are going to be some nuggets in here that I might say something in a different way or put it together in a different way that is just going to make the difference for you. And actually, the penny will drop on some things that make the biggest difference and you will walk away from today with a new perspective or some new information on how you can actually change your life going forward. So next, I want you to open your mind and suspend disbelief. You are incredibly powerful. You have no idea how powerful you are. But most of us don't want to believe that. And anything, absolutely anything you put your mind to is possible. And I want you to open your mind to that and just suspend any disbelief you have just for the next two and a half hours. Because unless you do that, you're going to keep up coming with reasons why not, why not, why I can't. But if you suspend disbelief and know that you are capable of achieving, achieving absolutely anything you put your mind to and that anything is possible, you are an infinite being of light with infinite power and potential. Absorb that. Get that into your heart, mind, body and soul. Every fiber and cell of your being needs to be shouting that because then you will be unstoppable. The willingness to change, I've already spoken about that. The more willing you are to change, the, the more you will transform from this moment forward. Every single moment is a new beginning. So you have the opportunity, no matter what's gone in your past, forget the past. It's been, it's done, it's over. 
no matter what's happened in the past, this moment is fresh, this moment is new, you can start right here, right now and declare that this is the beginning of the rest of your life. So do that right now, declare that this is the beginning of the rest of your life and it will be and you can have any life that you want. Commitment, commitment to yourself, commitment to doing whatever it takes, commitment to your future, commitment to your family. Just commit to your dreams. Commit to your dreams. They are possible. In fact, they are more than possible. They're waiting for you to arrive. That's so important for you to get. Your dreams are waiting for you to arrive. So commit to making the journey and taking the steps that you need to take to get there. Now, if you're sitting there going, oh, for God's sake, will she just shut up already? I'm already doing all of this. I'm doing it. Well, if it's not happening for you fast enough, there's obviously something that's missing and maybe you haven't committed all the way. That's the thing. It's no point committing 90% of the way or 95% of the way. You've got to commit 100% of the way. I have to tell you, this journey is not easy. This is a difficult journey. But it doesn't have to be a struggle. Okay? It's going to be challenging. There are going to be times where you have fears and frustrations and, and overwhelm and you just want to, going to want to give up. That's a part of the process. That is the same for everybody. But just don't give up and commit 100% to your future. Now we have a bit of a challenge because it's starting to rain and it's going to get, if it continues to rain, it's going to get very loud. That's why I wanted to be using my headset. So look, if you can hear the rain on the roof, I'm really, really sorry. If it does get loud, um, too loud, what I'll do is um, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I will figure it out. I'll connect on my laptop and I'll go um, back into the house or something. Um, but hopefully you can just put up with that for the time being. Okay. So the next part is to give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to explore all of those infinite possibilities. Give yourself permission to be brilliant, to shine, to realize your goals and dreams. You know that one of the biggest parts of this puzzle is that most people don't give themselves permission. So right here, right now, give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to be, do and have everything your heart desires. Dr. Wayne Dyer had, I don't know whether he still has, but he tells a story that many years ago he used to have um, a sign on his um, in front of him that said, I'm allowed. You're allowed. You're allowed to be, do and have anything that you want. You just have to give yourself permission and don't wait for anybody else to give you that permission. This is your journey. It's your life. Don't wait for somebody else to say it's okay. It is okay. Of course it's okay. Tell yourself it's okay and just do it. Okay. Take notes. You're probably already doing that. Um, ask questions. I've already been over that. That's, you know, the, the only dumb question is the question that you don't ask. So please ask as many questions as you can. As I said, I will try to get to as many as possible. Um, either during the training or um, at the end of the training. Um, and focus. Focus is really, really important. I have already mentioned that. Um, I know that you're going to jump in and out and you're going to go over to Facebook and you're going to do a bit of this and a bit of that. But please just try and stay as focused as possible for the next two and a half hours um, because there is going to be a hell of a lot of content here and I really don't want you to miss any of it because if you go away you might just miss the thing that you really needed out of this presentation. Okay, so what we're going to do first is cover a little bit about the Law of Attraction. Yeah, I know it's been done to death but there's just a few things that I want to remind you about and the subconscious mind. Um, there may be something in there that um, you haven't heard before, you haven't realized before. Um, the seven states of wealth. 
and um, you may have seen me present this before. I'm only going to touch on the seven states of wealth, but it's just a reminder because I want you to know what this presentation is about. There, many people take a one-dimensional approach to wealth. I take a multi-dimensional approach to wealth because financial wealth, look, it is one of the cornerstones of our existence. I cannot argue with that. It is. It brings liberation and freedom like you could never imagine. But it's not the only part of wealth. True wealth, Dr. D. Martini says, true wealth comes on many levels. And if you only have one part of the puzzle, then the rest can seem really empty and lifeless and unfulfilling. So that's why I take this multi-dimensional multi approach to wealth, which is so, so much richer than just the financial side of it. Um, we're going to smash your glass ceiling. So there, um, there are nine steps that I'm going to take you through today to achieving holistic wealth and unconditional happiness. And this is all about co-creating. The reason I talk about co-creating is because you don't have to do this on your own. Most heart-centered entrepreneurs, people like yourselves, healers, you might be yoga teachers, you might be coaches, um, you might be transformation experts, um, you might have a particular technique that you do with people, whatever it is that you do, um, you might help people transform their, fi transform their financial well-being, you might be a personal trainer, um, whatever it is that transforms people's lives, I know you're a change maker. If you are connected on this webinar, you are a change maker. And if you don't know that already, then own it now because the people who connect with me are change makers. They transform people's lives. And so many of us think we all have to do it on our own. We have the Lone Ranger Syndrome. We think that we have to do everything ourselves. In actual fact, there is an army out there, and I'm talking. I'm not just talking about an army of people who have um, services that you can utilize to really make your business go very, very fast. I am talking about the universe. I'm talking about all the angels, all the ethereal entities that you believe in. They're all there waiting to help you. All you have to do is ask, and you can actually delegate a lot of the stuff that you worry about over to the universe and let the universe take care of it. So this is about co-creating. It's not about having to do it all on your own. And if you feel the need that you have to do it on your own, then let go of that now. Um, because the biggest thing you can do is ask for help. And some people think it's a sign of weakness. Rubbish. Let go of that now. The biggest strength that you can have is in asking for assistance, asking for help, and the universe will provide it for you. As soon as you ask, it will come. Okay. We're going to do a review, a quick review, where I'm going to answer your questions. Um, and I will give you an opportunity at the end of this. There is a lot of information here. Um, and I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end of this to work with me to fast track your wealth, success and freedom. And please make sure you stick around to the end because after I've given you that opportunity um, and you know there's no obligation of course, it's just your, um, if you want to go further, if you like what you hear today and you like my work and you would like the support that I offer, then I'm going to be able to give you that opportunity. It would be negligent of me to give you all this overwhelming amount of information I'm going to give you today and then not give you an opportunity to work with me to actually put that into practice in your life, to fast track your wealth, success and freedom in your life. You are perfectly capable of doing this on your own. I don't deny that. Not for a moment. You have everything within you that you need to be, do and have everything you want. The question is if you've been going around and around and around in circles for a while, then you may need just a little bit of help to get you over that hump, to get you going and to really get you through whatever's holding you back. But after that, I'm actually going to change two really easy life-changing action steps that you can take every single day that take literally minutes and um, it's not EFT. Um, EFT, of course, is something that's amazingly life-transforming. But what I'm going to share with you is not EFT. 
and um, it's but it's two really really easy steps. So stick around for those. You don't want to miss them. One in particular is about transforming your wealth on a day to day basis. So please stick around with me for that. Okay. Here comes the rain again. So my next question is what's your master plan? Do you have one? If you have one, is it working for you? Because either if you don't have one, then you need to get one. Because success will not happen by accident. It doesn't happen by accident. People who are successful either have to work really, really hard at it to figure it out. They get help to help them to figure it out and what happens is most people work really 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 hard to try and figure it out they figure out that they can't figure it out and then they finally in their last moment of desperation before they have a nervous breakdown then they put their hand up and they ask for help um, and they get the support that they need to move forward either that or the very 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 few were born into an environment where they just had the master plan downloaded to them it was given to them because they were brought up in an environment of successful people. Um, and, you know, successful people share their success. And if you grow up in that kind of environment, it becomes a natural habit for you. Success just automatically becomes a habit for you. But if you don't grow up in that environment, then you need to, to develop that habit. And that takes a plan. Doesn't mean that you know how it's all going to turn out. Doesn't mean that you know exactly what you're going to do. But you have a master plan. Now, that's what I'm going to give you today with these nine steps. These nine steps are your master plan. And if you follow these nine steps, you will absolutely be unstoppable. You will achieve everything that you want to achieve. No doubt about it. That's why I really want you to sit up and take notice during this presentation. So, what's your master plan? Do you have one? If you do have one, are you following it? If you're following it, is it working? If it's not working, time to change the plan. Okay, moving on. Everything is energy vibrating at different frequencies. This is the law of attraction, guys. We know this. Nothing in the universe is solid. Everything is vibrating at a particular frequency. and um, and these frequencies are either, most of them are really, really dense in our existence, okay? So our physical being, the table that you might be sitting at, the chair that you're sitting on, um, the earth, everything's really, really dense because it's vibrating um, at a, a frequency that brings all these energy bits together in a very dense environment. However, within this dense environment, everything that is a different form is vibrating at a different frequency. So a flower takes the form that it does because it's vibrating at a particular frequency. Um, a brick takes a particular form because it's vibrating at a different frequency. Your heart vibrates at a different frequency to your liver, which vibrates at a different, the cells in your heart, sorry, vibrate at a different frequency to the cells in your liver, to the cells in your skin, to your nails, to your eyes, um, to your hair. Everything's vibrating at different frequencies. And the beauty, the reason I needed to touch on this is because you are, when you're, actually conceived you are in perfect harmony in perfect balance because everything that vibrates emits a sound and and um, you can't hear it because it's out of your audible range but everything emits a sound everything in the universe is emitting a sound constantly because everything in the universe is vibrating if it's not vibrating it doesn't exist so everything is vibrating and everything emits a sound. So your, your, all the cells in your body are vibrating at a particular frequency according to the function that they're given. So the heart cell, as I said, vibrating at a different frequency to the liver cell because they have different functions. Does that make sense? Um, so, But when you're born and conceived, all these cells are vibrating in harmony. So you're an amazing symphony. You're this incredible symphony of sound wandering through life. But as you wander through life, different events um, and, and things and traumas and people actually can bring you out of harmony. And 
firstly it brings your energy out of balance so we have our physical being we have our energetic being so first thing is it upsets our energetic being and this is where EFT comes in because when you upset your energy you actually can um, you actually create energy blocks blocks in your energy and when you have blocks in your energy it creates disruptions in your life so these blocks could be emotional um, they could be belief systems that you have they could be physical traumas that you've had and the limiting decisions that you've made and they create blocks in your energy system now if you don't clear the blocks in your energy system eventually they can't be ignored and they will go to the next level they will create disruptions in your body creating dis-ease within your body drawing your physical cells out of harmony now what happens is when one cell gets drawn out of harmony and it's vibrating um, at a different frequency and emitting a different sound you get what you call entrainment if it's strong enough it will actually draw other cells around it to vibrate with at its new frequency so all of a sudden it's creating more disharmony which creates more disharmony and more disharmony guess what you get dis-ease disease in the body I hope this is making sense what you need to do is firstly clear the energy blocks from your energy system and this directly relates to your physical being as well it will actually help to um, help if not completely remove if you're working on it in the right way it will actually completely remove the disruption from the physical body as well as the energy body and then this is where the sound healing comes in the sound healing that I do that you if you if you're within my community you will have experienced the sound healing the sound healing actually comes in and um, and completely shifts your vibration to a whole new level so you've already cleared the block which has um, brought, started to bring the body back into harmony and then the sound healing reminds the body of its original harmonic state the light language that I speak is a code that um, that actually reprograms the body it's a code that speaks directly to your higher consciousness and your cellular memory and reminds your body of its harmonic state <clears throat> now once you once the sound healing is over and your body has been reminded what happens after that is actually up to you is your decision if you go back to the same old stuff you will again be drawn back to out of it out of alignment and back into the same old frequency that you were you were out of harmony before unless you take positive action to continue to maintain that vibration and remind your body of that vibration over and over and over and over and over that's why with the sound healings that I put out there it's really good to listen to them over and over again um, and the law of attraction states that like attracts like so if you want abundance in your life you have to be vibrating abundance you have to be emitting a frequency of abundance your thoughts are an actual frequency that you emit which is why the universe can bring stuff to you because you are a transmission station your mind and let me just remind you that your mind is actually not confined to your brain your mind they've proved this in science now your mind is actually distributed right throughout your body in every single cell of your being has a brain a little tiny brain and so your mind is actually not contained anywhere it's in your energy body it's in your physical body and when you are emitting thoughts you are emitting frequencies you are emitting vibrations it's why it's really really important to emit the right thoughts and with the thoughts goes the feeling if you can emit the thought and the feeling of abundance you will get abundance back that's the way it works if abundance isn't coming back to you then you're not quite in alignment you haven't got the, the the thought right or the feeling right most of most people get the thoughts kind of correct but they can't get the feeling behind it which is so incredibly important so you've got to be if you want health you've got to be emitting health a frequency of health and having healthful thoughts if you want a loving relationship you've got to be oozing love emitting love sending love out to the universe and love will come back if you're holding back in any way shape or form then it's not going to come back unconditionally it's going to come back with conditions attached we don't want that we want this stuff to come to us unconditionally don't we does that make sense okay I hope so 
All right, next slide. Uh, I'm going to go through this really, really quickly. You guys would have heard this before, <clears throat> and I've made it really hard because I put it together in steps. But you can either play above the line or below the line. Above the line is taking responsibility for where you are right now. Nothing to do with blame or shame or guilt or any of that kind of stuff. It's just saying, I am here because of the thoughts I've had, the conditioning I've had, um, and the actions that I've taken. That's what's brought me here. And once you take responsibility, you, have, you are completely empowered to change your results day to day to day to day. If you are blaming and finding reasons why you um, are where you are that are outside of yourself and you're putting your focus outside of yourself as to why you're here right now, you become a victim. You are completely disempowered. You have absolutely no way to, um, to change your world, to change your life if you are in this state. So stop giving reasons for why you're at. It doesn't matter, as I said, what's gone before. What matters is right here, right now. Be present. Come into the present moment. Own your results. Just know that they are the result of actions that you've taken, thoughts that you've thought, belief systems that you have locked inside of you. But that doesn't mean you can't change. And when you choose that, when you choose to be results oriented and take responsibility, then you have the ability to choose how you respond to life rather than react. And I'm going to go into a little more detail of that in just a moment. And I kind of have already said this, but most people spend most of the time talking about how they can't because. They can't because they don't have the time. They can't because they don't think they're smart enough. They can't because they don't have the right set of circumstances. They can't because they're not, they, they don't have enough money. They can't because. I can't because. If you catch yourself anytime, anywhere saying, knowing that there's something that you want to do, I can't because, get rid of that. The thing is that we all choose. We all choose all the time. Everything is choice. If you're saying I can't because you're choosing not to, there's nothing else that's stopping you except you. You are choosing to be bound by whatever those circumstances are. Now, there may be things that you say I can't do that because I have commitments to my family. Okay, but it's not, it's not that you can't. It's that you are choosing not to because you want to honour your commitment to your family or to something else or you've promised somebody to something and you don't want to let them down. But don't say I can't because that is just, uh, well it's BS to be honest with you which is belief systems. Say I choose not to. Get rid of I can't and say I choose not to. Now if you really, really want to do something and there's no specific responsibility or reason that you want to choose something else. So um, if you want to, okay, just say you want to go on a world trip. You want to go or you want to go on a trip overseas. You want to go on a trip to the Greek islands or the Egyptian pyramids or whatever it is. I can't because I don't have enough money. Well, instead of I can't because, if you really, really want to do it, Get rid of I can't because and say, how can I? How empowering is this question as, as opposed to I can't because? I can't because stops all possibilities. It discounts every possibility in your life. There are infinite possibilities. Remember that. Whatever you want to be, do and have, there are infinite possibilities to be able to get you there. And when you start stop, and when you stop saying I can't and start asking the question how can I, everything changes because the universe will answer your question. As soon as you ask how can I, the universe goes into overdrive going, oh, finally, she's open to possibilities. Here you go. Here are some possibilities. And you will start to see the possibilities that you're open to. Another very critical point, you've got to be open to seeing the possibilities once you ask the question. So get rid of I can't. Start saying how can I. If there's something that you really want to do, how can I do that? How can that be a possibility? 
What else is possible? That's a brilliant question that comes from a, a technique called access consciousness. I've done it. I've never been drawn to actually um, uh, become somebody who facilitates it because I love what I do. But um, one thing I have taken on from access conscious, consciousness is, so what else is possible? Or how does it get any better than that? Write those two down. They are just the most amazing questions. How does it get any better than this? You know how we often say, um, oh, you know, we're, we're in a really great moment of our lives. We go, oh, it doesn't get any better than this. Stop saying that. Start saying, man, this is amazing. How does it get any better than this? As soon as you start putting out questions of how the universe will show you, you want it to get better. It can always get better. There's always room for improvement. So how does it get any better than this? And what else is possible? Two amazingly empowering questions. Write them down now. And this is something else that I think I was going to share with you later in amongst all my notes. But this is something that I can give you right now considering I'm touching on it. Ask yourself empowering questions. Most people wander around all day going, why? Why does my life suck? Why did he do that? Why doesn't she like me? Why is my job so awful? Why can't I get ahead? Why am I always broke? Well, the universe is just going to give you more reasons why, more examples of those particular things because that's what you're focusing on. Instead, ask questions like, how can I get ahead? How can I get a better job? How can I create the relationship of my dreams? Um, how can I um, get that beautiful car that I want? How is this possible? How is that possible? How can I make that happen? Start asking how and other empowering questions. Notice the statements that you're making to yourself and, um, and the questions that you're asking yourself and then turn them around because in all likelihood you are asking yourself some very disempowering questions. Okay, next. Good Lord, we're already almost an hour in. Man. Um, you are already a billionaire. Hey, isn't that cool? Write that down. You are already a billionaire. And you'll find out more about this during the nine steps and how you can actually unlock that wealth within you. If financial wealth is what you're looking for, then you already have it. But it's locked up in your... Um, in what is most important to you. It's locked up in your values, your value system. So there is knowledge in your head or there are skills that you have that are actually worth a billion dollars to you. I'm not joking. Don't dismiss this. Draw this in, write it down, read it every day, put it up on your wall. You are already a billionaire. You have everything you need within you right now to become a billionaire. And look, if that's not what you want financially, then just know that whatever you want, you have it within you already. You don't need to become somebody different. Um, you don't need to be somebody different. You do actually need to transform and become the person you need to be to, to have the billion dollars in your physical life. But that potential is already within you. That, that billion dollars is already locked up inside of you in some form. And as I said, I've only got three hours with you. And even that, I'm starting to think, oh my God, I'm, I'm, just, I'm so not going to get there. Um, but um, even that, I'm not going to be able to transform your life in these three hours and to unlock all of that within you in just three hours. But just know that it is in there and that you have the potential to unlock that. It's just that it's not in the form. If, if you haven't realized it in your bank account yet, then it's just not in the form of money just yet. It doesn't mean you can't have it in the form of money. And we'll discuss that, as I said, a little bit further on. This came from the incredible T. Harbecker. If your subconscious blueprint is not sent for success, nothing you learn, nothing you know, nothing you do will make much of a difference. So mindset is everything. You can have all the how-tos in the world. You can have the best blueprint 
for achieving success but if you don't have the mindset then it's never going to work so it's really critical that you work on your mindset to achieving whatever you want it doesn't matter if it's around health relationships the financial wealth um, your spirituality if you don't have the mindset for it nothing you learn nothing you know and nothing you do will make much of a difference so that is so incredibly critical you must continue to do the personal development work this is where personal growth and personal development is just the most important thing to you achieving what you want if you don't do the personal growth and the personal development to change your mindset then you're never going to achieve what you want to achieve Tony Robbins said 80% of success is psychology and 20% is strategy and you know far be it for me to argue with Tony Robbins but I kind of think that maybe even that's a little conservative I think maybe 95% of success is psychology and 5% is strategy absolutely you have to put things in place but once you have the mindset the strategy just seems to come naturally it just seems to happen you are inspired to do the things that you need to do learn the things that you need to learn develop the skills that you need to have it just seems to happen with ease when you've got the psychology right and the answer to every single problem in the universe global personal whatever it might be lies in your level of consciousness it was Einstein who said you cannot change um, anything you cannot solve any problem at the same level of consciousness at which it was created okay so if you are in financial difficulty right now then the consciousness that created that financial difficulty needs to shift you must move to a higher level to be able to solve the problem that has been created within your life if you don't shift the consciousness you will never solve the problem because you are still at the same level of consciousness that created the problem in the first place everything is created by our level of consciousness the mess that we have our planet in at the moment was created a particular level of consciousness if we don't shift the consciousness of the people on the planet we will continue to trash this place and we won't have a place left to trash it'll be well it'll still be here in some form but we won't we'll destroy ourselves and the planet will have to start rejuvenating all on its own and she will mother earth is very 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 clever and she won't be destroyed she'll rejuvenate she'll recover might take her a while but we won't be around to see that if we don't shift our level of consciousness my brother gosh I'm going off on a tangent here but just very very quickly my brother bless his cotton socks love him dearly um, he is um, he started something called transition towns here in a part of Australia and he is so dedicated to it he's been dedicated to it now for over a decade he is incredible he's tireless and you know he is so passionate about educating people about a sustainable future but my thing is why don't you get in and shift their consciousness first because if you shift their consciousness you don't have to educate them they will come to you if you, if you shift people's levels of consciousness they will come to you because they want a sustainable future and you're the guy with the goods so it's really important that we shift consciousness about relationships if it's about health if you want to be more healthy you have to step into a health consciousness every answer to every problem lies in the level of consciousness and that is what I'm about the greatest lie that you were ever told that is holding you back from living the life of your dreams is that you are separate from what you want think about that for a moment we are taught from the moment we arrive see when we arrive we actually know we still know that we are an infinite being we still understand our power and potential we still know that we are one with every single thing in the universe we're one with every person with every flower with every insect um, even with the cockroach that died in my honey this morning um, I'm one with the cockroach God bless his soul and rest in, rest in peace um, but <laughs> no I, I'm not infested with cockroaches I just had a little cockroach that, that died in a little pool of honey that was in my cup this morning um, 
why did I need to tell that story? Who knows? Um, but we are one with everything. We are um, we are an infinite being, and we come from an infinite source. And we come into this world. We still remember that. We still remember our connection to all that is. And um, it's just that we forget. As we go through life, we forget and we start to believe that we are separate from everything. And you know, you are not separate from anything. The truth is that you are actually not separate from what you want. This is the lie. The lie is that you are separate from what you want. The truth is that you are not separate from anything. If you want wealth in your life, you are actually completely connected to abundance. You can't be disconnected. It's impossible. You are completely connected to love and peace and joy and safety and faith and consciousness. You have this inseparable connection. You cannot disconnect from your source. The only thing is that you've forgotten your connection. You've actually set it aside so you can live a life of independence. And now you are being called back. From the moment you forget your connection, you are constantly being called back to that connection. Your connection with me right now is all about the source calling you back to the infinite source of all that is, calling you back to connecting with everything that you want. Because everything that you want, wants you. Everything that you want is a part of who you are already. You are not separate from it. And when you get that on a heart level, all of a sudden you want for nothing. Just think about that for a moment. If you are not separate from anything, how can you want anything? You can't. If it's already a part of you, how can you want it? It's already there. It's just that you have denied your connection so you have come to believe that you are separate from it. Does that make sense? Okay. You're probably still all traumatized by the poor little cockroach that died in my cup. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, man. Where my mind goes sometimes. It's just bizarre. Nothing is missing. You are whole. You are complete. You are perfect in every single way. You have everything you need within you to achieve everything you have ever dreamed of and so much more. You know what? There is so much more than you are capable of that you have never even thought of. You are capable of achieving anything that anybody else has ever achieved in this lifetime. Anything. But if you don't start now, your time is running out. And you're going to get less opportunity to achieve more things. So the earlier you start this journey, the more opportunity you have to achieve more things. Remember, we are infinite beings with infinite power and potential. So the earlier you start this journey of discovery and realizing your goals and dreams, the more you can achieve. But it doesn't matter where you're starting, just start now. Because if there's stuff that you want to achieve, then Man, you know, we are always on a journey to our next goal. Always. Now, the question is, do and you're going to drop off the planet at some stage. We're all going to die. It's a condition of our human existence. The question is, do you want to die on the way to um, the, the next day or the next week of disappointment and frustration and overwhelm and dissatisfaction? Um, or... Do you want to drop off the planet on your way to the next most amazing version of who you are, to an amazing goal and dream? Do you, You're always going to die on the way to a goal. Make that goal the grandest, most amazing possible vision of a goal that you could possibly imagine for yourself right now. And, and go for that. And when you reach that, then set another amazing, grand vision and then go for that because you have it within you to achieve anything. I'm going to go over this so much during this presentation because if you get that, if that is the only thing you get in this presentation, your entire world will be transformed. Okay, next. 
Um, now this is to do again with the law of attraction. What happens is, okay, we have intentions. I've got to take some water. Sorry, excuse me for just a moment. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to have a quick look and um, see what any questions you have or any feedback that you have. See how you're doing all out in the land out there, in the land of possibilities. Excuse the funny sounds. Oh, look, we've got people from Bellingham, Kansas. Um, for example, if I want more than one area, one area regarding work I want to target, then I create many different consciousness. consciousness. Okay. I gather by that question, if I want more than one area regarding work, so you want more out of your working life. It's not about creating many different consciousness. consciousness, consciousness. <laughs> I can't even say the word. It's about actually creating one consciousness and focusing on the goal. So what is your vision regarding your work? What is your ultimate outcome? regarding your work. Is there a particular type of work that you want to be doing? Then you create a consciousness around that work. It's not many different consciousness conscious about having lots of different consciousnesses. It's about got the word out. It's about having one consciousness with a particular outcome. You can have many different things going on within that consciousness but it's actually a united consciousness. You may get this a little bit more when I go into a little bit um, more of the um, more of the presentation. Somebody has said hello, not able to hear anything now. I hope you can still all hear me. Please be, give me feedback and tell me that you can all hear me still. When we, when we see that same kind of con patterns are repeating in our lives again and again, what should we do? You need to break the pattern. Um, and you'll be given the tools, I'll actually give you the tools to be able to break those patterns and this is what happens. When we have a particular consciousness in our lives, that's what we do. Our subconscious is actually programmed to repeat the same conditions in our lives again and again and again and again and that's what EFT does. You've got to break the pattern by doing certain things. You've got to recognize the pattern and that's that's the biggest part of actually finding the solution is recognizing the pattern. And once you recognize the pattern, then you must take different action. And you, once you see the pattern coming through in your life again, stop. Do a pattern interrupt. That's a great term that comes from NLP. I haven't done NLP, but um, I've, I've actually been to some free webinars and workshops and they call it a pattern interrupt in that you stop the pattern and go, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to take different action. And there are so many ways that you can do that in your life. And just by doing that on one thing every single day, do that. If you have a particular pattern, notice the pattern and every single day for two weeks, take um, conscious positive steps toward not falling back into that same old pattern, um, actually 30 days. 30 days is optimal on one particular thing in your life and then choose another thing and do that for another 30 days and another thing and another 30 days. And you will t develop different habit, habits. So I hope that makes sense. You'll actually receive a lot more information on that during the, the um, webinar, rest of the training. Is there still a target, is there still a market for, for more abundance? Money manifesting EFT coaches, it seems. There are so many successful ones. How about if I just get started? Why should anybody want to work with a novice? Oh my God, this is such an incredibly, incredibly good question. Um, this is all about your self confidence and your self worth. You are unique. We are all incredibly unique. You have, there is nobody else in the world who has your same perspective, who has the same knowledge that you have, who has the same way of delivering information that you do, who has um, the same way of communicating that we that you do, of connecting with people that you do. There is an audience out there that will connect better with you than they do with anybody else on the planet. And if you don't 
give those people that option. Then they're going to try and connect with somebody who they don't connect uh, quite as well with and they're not going to get the, the, the great results that they would get with you. It doesn't matter um, that, you know, and this is where so much of our suffering and our defeat, there's no such thing as, um, as failure, it's just feedback. But you can be defeated if you continue to, to, to compare yourself with the people who are ahead of you. Yes, there are, gosh, there are, you know, EFT masters out there who are way ahead of the, the curve than me. There are financial abundance people out there who have been doing it longer than I have. But it, it didn't stop me from getting started. It didn't stop me from going, you know what, I just have to start where I am right here, right now with what I've got and just get going. Because I connect with people in ways that those other particular coaches don't connect with them. And while they have a particular audience who won't connect with me, there is a particular there are a particular audience that are listening to those people who will connect better with me. And if I don't serve those people, then I am doing them a grave disservice. If I am not sharing my gift with the world, I am robbing the people who need me of my brilliance, of my and that's not an egotistical thing because we all have our brilliance. I am robbing the people of the opportunity to work with the best person for them. So take whatever you have, start wherever you are right here, right now and just get started because there are people out there who will love you to pieces and think that you are the best thing that ever happened because you will speak their language. You will connect with them in a way that nobody else will connect with them. So stop comparing yourself to those who have gone ahead of you. Use them as your mentors and your coaches and your guides. Get whatever you can from them. You will always learn. But just remember that you are ahead of so many other people. You already started on this journey. You're already listening to this stuff. You're already doing it, which is you're so far ahead of the curve of the majority of the people on this planet all you have to be is one or two steps ahead of the person who needs your help. That's all. You don't have to know everything. This is what stops so many people. <clears throat> um, they think they have to do another course. They think they have to read another book. They think that um, they have to get another qualification. Qualifications give you very little. Very little. You can self-educate and actually be a much better facilitator than some of the people who have you know masses of letters after their names. I know some psychologists who aren't actually very good at connecting with people. They know all of the stuff, they've got it all stored in their heads, but they're not really good with connecting with people. What is the what what is the point of of being some sort of a leader or a coach or a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist if you can't connect with people? All the knowledge in the world is not going to actually give you that. I hope that answers your question. Um, there's so much free on the internet. Why would anybody hire a money coach? And if I have my own website, is it difficult to write about the matter of attracting money in a new way? And I don't want to infringe on somebody else's copyright. You uh, have your own unique approach. You just need to unlock that within your mind. Um, and you know what, um, the reason people hire coaches is because as I said before, they try to do it on their own and they try and they try and they try and they try and they struggle and they struggle and they struggle and they find that it's not coming together and finally, this is not everybody, some people are actually ahead of the curve and they know they need a coach and they just go and get a coach. Um, but um, they will get to that point where they just go and they won't give up, The people, many people will just give up but those who don't give up will then and actually go and seek help and ask for help because they know that they need help. So the, the importance of a coach is to actually get you there faster. And there is, yes, there's plenty of free information on the internet. We are in information overload. We have actually moved out of the age of information into the age of transformation. And this is why the world of coaching is such a burgeoning industry, is because, yes, all the information is out there. There are tens of thousands of books on how to become wealthy. There are 
dozens of webinars, sorry, not dozens, hundreds of webinars like this. There are telesummits. There um, is blogs. There's YouTube videos. There's podcasts. There's all of that stuff out there. So why aren't six and a half billion pop people on the planet living a life of um, a, a, a life of wealth and freedom? Why? Because they don't know what to do with that information. They've got all the information. They just don't know what to do with it. And they've still got all their blocks, um, their, their subconscious programming that's hidden away in the recesses of, their, recesses of their mind. They don't even know what's stopping them from doing the things that they need to do to achieve the things they need to achieve. And this is where a coach, a mentor can actually unlock all that for you. This is why having that support is so incredibly important. Of course, you know all the information about health, it's out there. It's not as if we are starved for information on how to be healthy and, and slim and active and live to wear 120. The information is all out there. It's just that people don't know how to integrate that into their lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's habits. The same with relationships. All the information's out there. Does that make sense? Does that actually help to, to free those limiting beliefs up for you? Because those questions are coming for your, from your own limiting beliefs and your own um, feelings of lack of self-worth. Okay, um, I'm just checking through the rest of these questions, looking for feedback. Okay. Um, yes, uh, there will be um, a replay of the presentation. So if you can't stay for the whole three hours, which is a real shame, um, there will be a replay. Cool, we're all still here. All right, I better get back to this presentation. Um, so you have intention versus counter intention. Uh, I didn't cover this, I don't think. So you set out all these intentions, you have your goals and dreams, you're taking positive action, you're working your butt off, and then the rug gets pulled out from under you. And this happens time and time and time and time again. You get frustrated because you know what you should be doing, but you just can't seem to bring yourself to do it on a consistent enough basis to achieve the results that you want. Um, and that's in any area. In relationships, we get drawn into stuff. Um, and so you have the, the, the intention. The intention is incredib incredibly powerful. It's a very big part of the step. But then your subconscious mind has these counter intentions, which are limiting decisions that you've made, limiting belief systems, negative subconscious programming, um, self-esteem issues, fears, doubts, um, and feeling and and maybe you feel that it's not safe to achieve what you want to achieve because there are experiences that you had that proved to you in the past that it wasn't safe. So there's a counter intention in your subconscious. And you remember, your subconscious drives 96 to 98 percent of your results. 96 to 98 percent of your results are determined by your subconscious mind. So if your subconscious mind is not on board with your intention, you got two chances, Buckley's and none of actually achieving what you want to achieve and it's going to be damned hard work. So it's really, really important. This is why I said mindset is critical. It's really, really important to uncover that unconscious, those subconscious programming, the limiting decisions, the safety issues, the belief systems, the fears, the doubts and bring them to the surface and release them so you don't have any counter intentions to what you want to achieve. Um, so that's what happens when it's like, why isn't it working for me? Why, 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 why? Well, firstly, very disempowering question. Why isn't it working for me? Turn that around. How can I make it work for me? But it's because you have counter intentions. And once you really understand that, you'll stop um, looking at your life out of sheer frustration and start looking at it as in a possibility to grow. Okay, so if I'm not achieving my goals and dreams yet, then there must be a counter intention in there somewhere. How do I uncover it? And then I have the tools to be able to do something with it. EFT 
you have the tools to be able to, to actually disarm those counter intentions, to release them, to get on your path to success. I, the, the, the difference between why some people achieve success really quickly and why some people take so long is there's two things. Firstly, it's how hard they're working on an unblocking whatever their counter intentions are and releasing whatever their, their counter intentions are. Secondly, it's how deeply embedded and how many counter intentions you have. You have ma may have made 1,256 limiting decisions way back when you were a child about not being wealthy. So if you've created 1,256 and the person beside you has only created 125, then it's going to be much easier, if you're doing the same level of work, it's going to be much easier for the person with only 125 limiting decisions to um, to get to move forward than it is for the person who's made 1,256 limiting decisions. Does that make sense? Now, it doesn't mean that you have to unpeel and uncover 1,256 limiting decisions because those limiting decisions would have come from particular events and circumstances in your life. And once you uncover those events and circumstances, you can actually um, release, by releasing your attachment to those events and circumstances, you actually release the counter intention. And you may have made 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 counter intentions. Um, or limiting beliefs through one particular event. Look, the subconscious mind is an absolute minefield. <laughs> it is. Um, it's a massive puzzle and we created this for a reason. Remember, we created this puzzle for a reason. Yes, it's frustrating at times. And yes, you kind of think, why? Why would I do this to myself? It was because, and I think we actually didn't realise just how hard it was going to be when we got here. Um, it's because we wanted to experience the separation. We chose to come here to experience the separation so we could experience the reconnection and get to appreciate it. You know how when something, you know how when you're just always healthy? I mean, if, you, if you're like me and you're just always healthy, then you don't actually appreciate your health until all of a sudden you're not healthy. So, look, I haven't been sick in years, but uh, beginning of last year, my back pain flared up. And I haven't had back pain in years and years and years and years and years. And I used to have chronic back pain. Um, and, but I... When, I'm, when I don't have back pain, I take the health of my back for granted. I don't even think about it. When I have, am in chronic, when I was in chronic back pain with my back, man, all of, a, all of a sudden, did I really appreciate all those days and weeks and months and years that I had spent without back pain. But again, I lose the back pain. All of a sudden, I don't even think about how much I appreciate not being in pain. We don't. So... This is really, I don't even know why I went off on that tangent, um, but it's really important to uncover those counter intentions so you can release them and um, be able to achieve whatever you want to achieve. If things aren't working out the way you want, there's just something that you don't know. It might be that you don't know what your counter intentions are, your limiting beliefs are, your fears are. Um, you, you might not know that you have um, a low self-esteem. I didn't know I had a low self-esteem. Um, but um, and I'll tell you a story about that. Actually, I'll tell you the story now. Um, I was working with a coach last year, and um, I said something during the session that he picked up on, and he went, "What was that?" And I went, "What was what?" And he said, "When you said that, I can't even remember what I said, but he said, when you said that, your face kind of all screwed up. What was that about?" I thought, I don't know, I didn't even realise my face screwed up. And this is where a coach is so important because they will pick up on things that you say, things that they see that you don't even know are there and they can unravel things for you. So we kind of discussed it for a while. I didn't know what was going on but I kept asking the question and, and doing. I started doing tapping. Even though I didn't know what it was, I started doing tapping. You know what I uncovered? I uncovered 
that I believed that I was less than nothing. Now, you know how I come across. I come across as a fairly confident person. I always have. But within me, there was a belief that I was less than nothing. In fact, in fact, I believed I was so far below nothing, I couldn't even see nothing. Now, I know where that came from. I know the circumstances that I had when I was a kid that created that. And I had worked on that event. I worked on it and worked on it and worked on it, on that trauma that was in my life. And yet, I was shocked. I was so shocked that my self-esteem and my belief in me was still so incredibly low that I believed that I was so far below nothing that I couldn't even see nothing. That was a revelation for me. Um, but once I uncovered that, once I knew that, man, everything changed. I did EFT on it, I released it, and it was just something that I didn't know. So maybe there's um, information that you don't know, maybe there's belief systems that you don't know exist in your head, um, maybe there's um, a skill that you haven't mastered yet. If it, things aren't working out the way you want, there's just something that you don't know. So you've got to keep asking the right questions, keep moving forward, keep taking positive actions until you find out what that is so you can release it. And once you understand that, you realise that everything is possible. Okay, so it didn't work out. What don't I know that I need to know to make it work? Very empowering question. What do I need to know that I don't know now to make this work, to get the results that I want? Okay. Do you know what your purpose is? I want you to think about that. Do you know what your purpose is? Because no matter, this comes directly out of the files of Esther Hicks and Abraham. Your purpose is joy. That is your purpose on this planet, doing whatever brings you joy. Being the person who lives in joy, that is your purpose. That is why they say, um, to follow your bliss because that's your purpose. Whatever brings you joy is what your purpose is. Now your purpose might be to be a personal trainer. It might be to be a yoga teacher. It might be to be a wealth transformation expert. It might be to be an energy healer or a massage therapist or some other kind of body worker. It might be to be a Feldenkrais practitioner or um, an access conscious practitioner or an NLP practitioner. Whatever it is that brings you joy, that is your purpose. Do that. And you will find that life will unfold like magic before your eyes. You will still come against blocks and challenges, absolutely. Life is never going to be uh, smooth waters, all smooth waters. You will have moments where the seas are calm and everything is, is blissful and joyful and, and, um, and moving forward effortlessly. But there are going to be challenges, but if you are living your bliss, living your mission, then you will still feel joy while you're moving forward. You'll be in bliss because you are doing what your mission is. You're living your mission. That is what your purpose is, is joy. The four levels of learning. This is kind of, it doesn't seem to, to flow in this presentation, but it's something that I really wanted you to know. Firstly, you have unconscious competence. This is where you don't know what you don't know. So um, it's, well, you don't know what you don't know. So you're unconsciously incompetent. Either there's a skill that you haven't mastered yet that you don't need, that you don't know that you need to master. There's information out there that you don't know that you need to know. Um, there's, um, there's something that you don't know yet, but you don't know that you don't know. And until that comes into your awareness, you can't know it. That sounded so wrong. <laughs> I hope it made sense to somebody. Um, 
Then you've got conscious competence. So then you know that you don't know. So all of a sudden a piece of information comes into your existence and you go, oh, I didn't know that. Maybe you've never heard of this before. And you go, oh, I didn't know that. But now you are you consciously know that you don't know it. Or there's a skill that you need to develop. Now, if you want to become um, an incredibly great chess player and you've never played chess before, you know that you don't know how to play chess, don't you? Or if you want to be able to drive a car and you've never driven a car before, you know that you don't know how to drive a car. So what you need to do then is to become consciously competent and how you become consciously competent is through practice. How you get to know the skill is through practicing the skill. How you get to, um, to actually know the information on a competent level is through continually exposing yourself to the information. So um, continuing to read new books on the subject that you want to be an expert in, on the thing that you want to do the most. Practicing every single day the skill that you want. If you want to become a chef, you've got to practice being in the kitchen doing the things that chefs do to become really good at it. But this is still consciously competent when you still have to think about it. So again, when you're learning to drive a car, Initially, you've got to do the clutch and the brake and the um, and the gear stick, and you've got to watch all the traffic around you, left side, right side, front, back, coming from all directions, stoplights, stop signs, giveaways. There's so much we are bombarded with, and it's incredibly overwhelming when we first start to drive a car because there's so much that we are dealing with all at once, and we are trying to develop our competence through conscious awareness. We have to think physically about what we're doing to be consciously competent. Now, the, the advantage of practice and immersing yourself in the information is you eventually become unconsciously competent. So with driving a car, once you've been doing that for a while, you can drive to work and never even remember the drive because you're off thinking about, particularly if you're a female, you're off thinking about the other million and one things that you've got going on in your day-to-day -day life that you have to cope with. That driving a car is the least important thing. It's actually the most important thing because if you're present, then, you know, if something happens and you're present, you're much more likely to be able to save yourself and somebody else from a critical accident. But that's by the by. Um, if you've got a million and other one things going on, because you are unconsciously competent with your driving, you change gear, cha gears, the gears automatically, you just stop at a red light automatically, um, you're listening to the radio at the same time, you're not even focused or concentrating because you are unconsciously able to drive your car and to do it without thinking about it. And that's where you want to be with whatever you're doing. You want to become unconsciously competent. You don't wait until you're unconsciously competent until you get started. You get started at the point of conscious incompetence. You Then you, you practice through conscious competence and then you become unconsciously incompetent. Oh, sorry, unconsciously competent. I went back to the beginning. Unconsciously competent through the immersion, through the practice, through the living it, through the breathing it, through the just uh, just living it and being it, you become unconsciously competent. And that's where you want to be with what you do, finance, with relationships, with it will still require work. But when you're at a level of unconscious competence, your habits just support what you want to achieve automatically and you don't have to put so much effort into it. Okay, really, really quickly, I'm going to get through the seven states of wealth and then we're going to go for a break, okay? All right, so firstly, the first state of wealth, and as I said, um, I take a multidimensional approach to wealth. Health, of course, this is a critical um, part of our the richness that we live in on, on this planet. If you have billions and billions of dollars and you have terminal cancer, well, you've got terminal cancer. Ain't no billions of dollars going to change that. I was fascinated over the last couple of years by the series 
but the the four um, series of um, uh, things of uh, TV programs that were released on two very very wealthy families that shaped media not only in this country but also in um, in other countries as well. We had the Packers and we had the Murdochs and of course we still we, we know Rupert Murdoch most people would know Rupert Murdoch because um, he's an Australian but he you know the big scandal in the UK with the news of the world and um, he obviously bit, bit off a bit more than he can chew, could chew and got a bit too big for his boots and the universe decided to bring him back down to size um, but you know they him um, and the Packers um, Frank Packer, Kerry Packer, now his son James Packer, um, and um, they really shaped media in this country. They were the big, massive media moguls, and we had four miniseries recently um, about their about their lives. Now they were incredibly wealthy, incredibly wealthy. They were media moguls. They had TV stations and newspapers and and all this kind of stuff. That's how they built their wealth. But the Packers in particular, completely unconscious as far as their health con was concerned and their relationships, by the by. They had crap relationships. They had crap health. Now, they had all the wealth in the world, but man, their portrayal of them, they weren't very happy people. And in fact, Kerry Packer seemed like a very unhappy man. So, and he died at the age of, I think, 67, which in today's relative terms is really quite young. He died from, um, uh, I think he died from heart failure or lung failure, I'm not sure which because certainly lung disease ran in the family because they're all smokers. My point is they were very, very wealthy but their health sucked. So, you know, it didn't save him in the end. He died at 67. He didn't get to continue to enjoy all his wealth. And fortunately, now all of these um, these initial six states of wealth that I'm going to put up are in no particular order. They are all as important as each other. The reason for me that health is there is because health for me has always been incredibly easy. I was born and raised in a family um, whereby I just adopted healthy habits. I was exposed to health all around me and I adopted healthy habits. Health to me I have unconscious competence as far as health is concerned. I exercise loads. I eat really well. Um, I'm very conscious of my all my habits around my health. Do I do things that aren't healthy? Yeah, I'm human. But the 80-20 rule, 80 to 90% of my habits are very healthy habits and I'm a very healthy person and I live a wonderful, vibrant, healthy life. I love jumping out of bed in the morning, feeling pain-free, alive, vibrant, ready to take on the world, strong. Such an incredible part of, part of um, our rich existence and if you don't have your health, pretty much you have nothing. So very important that you look after your health our emotional well-being. We come to this planet, I believe, if you take the emotions out of our existence, we have nothing. We're robots. There is no point in us being here without our emotions. Now, unfortunately, we're not taught to deal with our negative emotions. We, um, well, what we have labelled as negative emotions. We have the emotions within us on every level, from depression, and um, frustration and anger and sadness and um, and despair right up to joy and bliss and you know and love and peace and all the stuff that we really really want it's all there in us we couldn't experience it if it wasn't already in us unfortunately we have not been taught to deal with what happens is those those Feelings that are uncomfortable, that are, okay, wait a minute, I just need to um, stop this for just a moment and show you, let's go, back, let's go down here, Doo -doo -doo. Uh, here we go, the emotional guidance scale. 
So this is the emotional guidance scale. Again, this is taken directly from Abraham, Abraham Hicks. If you've never heard or listened to Abraham Hicks, you must. Esther, E-S-T-H-E-R, Hicks, H-I-C-K-S, or Abraham, A-B-R-A-H-A-M, will get you to videos and information and books and all sorts of stuff. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Um, and this came directly out of um, Ask and you, uh, Ask and It Is Given. Ask and It Is Given. Great, great book. Ask and It Is Given. The Emotional Guidance Scale. So you can see you get past ooh, about eight. Once you get eight and below, you're starting to feel uncomfortable. This is because all of these um, feelings from eight right down to 22 are lower in vibration than the ones above. So each one on that scale is that's down that's down the scale is lower in vibration than the one above it. So if you're experiencing anger, anger is actually lower in vibration than discouragement. Revenge is lower in, in um, vibration than anger. Now you move, we all move up and down this emotional guidance scale all the time. But when we start feeling uncomfortable, the more uncomfortable we feel, the more unacceptable we've been taught it is. It's not acceptable to feel anger. It's not acceptable to feel revenge. It's not acceptable to feel jealous. So we repress them because we're not taught that they are part of who we are. They just are. And we are here to experience all these incredible emotions right throughout the entire spectrum of the scale. And what you resist persists. So if you deny the emotion or resist it, then you either make it worse or you just repress it and try and hide it and it just gets locked away in the body somewhere to come out somewhere else, either in physical disease or in, or in destructive relationships or in um, uh, financial poverty. Your emotions can come out, can be expressed in these ways. So this is why it's really, really, really important that we are conscious of our emotions, that we learn how to deal with all of them, no matter how uncomfortable that we are, and then we can move ourselves up the vibrational scale. And once you release one emotion, it's gone. Yes, it can be triggered to come back, but it doesn't have to stay stuck within you if you experience it fully and that doesn't mean that you express it and put it onto somebody else. It just means you experience it fully. You get to know it, love it and understand it. It'll disappear. You can EFT it. Absolutely. Um, but I advise you to get to know it first. Before you EFT it, get to know it. Get to understand it, get to love it, get to um, know what it's trying to tell you and then release it. Because once you have a really good relationship with your emotions, nothing will ever keep you stuck or ever make you feel uncomfortable for any, any extended period of time. And it's really important that we become um, comfortable with all of our emotions because that's what we're here to experience. And you can experience all these emotions and experience joy at the same time. You can experience joy through anger. You can experience joy through um, through um, worry. You can experience joy through frustration. I know it's hard to believe you, but you can actually experience joy in every emotion. The thing that you need to do is actually dive into the emotion to find it, because joy is always there. Joy is is always the underlying emotion that is always there waiting for you. Go through your uncomfortable emotions to joy. Um, and of course, when we are really comfortable with our emotions, then we can respond to life rather than react to life. If you are harboring anger, repressing anger, guess what's going to happen? Something will trigger you and you will get so damned angry, you will be Mount Vesuvius. You will have no idea where that level of rage came from. But it'll come. You cannot repress it for forever. It will not be denied or it will make you very, very, very sick. And it'll kill you in the end. Guaranteed. But when you understand, you know, Yes, you'll get angry. The Dalai Lama says, gosh, if you, if, you, if you don't get angry, then there's something wrong with you. 
we have things on this planet that cause us to feel anger, to feel grief, to feel fear, to feel sadness, to feel revenge. Um, you know, for me, I'm passionate about the level of cruelty on this planet. And yes, there's cruelty toward everything. There's, cru there's cruelty toward human beings, which is unimaginable. There's also cruelty toward animals, which just... Man, I can't watch some of the videos. I just can't. It just just it just destroys me emotionally. Um, and I feel angry and I feel all those things. But I choose not to be stuck in them. And um, I process them so I can be. Otherwise, I am not being the best I can be. I am not living up to my full potential if I am staying stuck in those emotions. And I can, if I'm, if I am stuck in those emotions, then I'm going to react to life, and get a worse outcome than respond to life. If you can choose to respond to any situation and circumstance out of inspiration, and out of compassion, and out of understanding, and out of love, you are going to get a way better outcome than if you actually come in and just you're triggered by anger and you just respond through anger. Relationships are destroyed because people respond out of anger. Look at the, um, and particularly if you're in the States, look at the amount of people, tens of thousands of people killed every year through gun violence. Um, now, we in Australia don't actually understand that because we have a completely different philosophy around guns than you guys do. Um, but a lot of those deaths are through domestic um, confrontation, domestic conflict. Now, I would suggest that the majority of people who pull the trigger pull the trigger in a moment of anger. Now, do you think 30 seconds later, 5 minutes later, 30 minutes later, that person is going, most people are going to regret that they just pulled the trigger in a moment of anger? Of course they are, but they can't take it back. But when you're, and that's because they've been triggered, they don't know how to respond to the situation, they're just in reaction mode. They're actually completely unconscious at that point. But when you are emotionally, um, in a state of emotional well-being, and you are um, really able to accept your emotions, you can respond to life. You can disarm any conflict. You can get the best possible outcome in any situation when you're responding, not reacting. I hope that makes sense. Okay, um, actually I need to go back and all right, let's move really fast now. Relationships. We're also here to be in relationship. We're in relationship with the um, our planet with we're in relationship with other people we're in relationship with our environment we're in relationship with ourselves the most important relationship is our relationship with ourselves and if your relationship with yourself is a really really good one then all your other relationships will reflect that it is true you cannot have, expect anybody else to love you unconditionally until you love yourself unconditionally. And when you love yourself unconditionally, all your relationships will reflect that. Everything out there is a mirror to what is within you. So once you own that everything that's coming at you is actually about your relationship with yourself, then everything changes. Um, there's so much more I could say on that, but I'm not going to because I really am running way out of time. Um, of course, financial wealth. This is such, it is a cornerstone of our existence. Money is fun tickets, guys. Money is your ability to be able to experience all the wonderful things this planet has to offer. We were given the most rich, wonderful environment to be able to experience so much. So why the hell wouldn't you? Why would anybody want you to be denied that? Seriously, why? It doesn't make sense. Why put a child in the middle of a playground and say, no, you can't play on any of that, you're not allowed. Yet all the other kids, there are 20, 30 other kids running around having the time of their lives but you place this child in the middle of that environment and go, you're not allowed to go and have fun, you're not allowed to do anything. 
because I'm not going to let you. That's what we do to ourselves. We do that with our wealth, with our money. Because we have these limiting beliefs, we've made these limiting decisions that I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, it's not safe. Um, we have these fears and doubts and self-esteem issues that stop us. We have toxic emotions that actually hold us back from stepping into our financial wealth. But it is a part of this incredibly rich existence and stop denying yourself financial wealth. Find whatever it is and uncover it and unblock it and just have fun. You know, why not? So there, there is no logical reason for it, is there, really? It's just that your subconscious has limiting decisions and limiting beliefs. So keep doing the work, keep finding out what it is to unblock it. Because I believe we are all destined to enjoy every single part of, or we're all maybe not destined to, but we're all... Um, we all have the opportunity to, is a better way to put it. We all have the opportunity to experience all that is. It's up to us to do what we need to do to experience what we want. So financial, very, very important part of the equation. Intellectual, um, this is a couple of different things. Firstly, it's uh, mostly it's wisdom. Now they say wisdom and knowledge is power. I don't agree. There is no power in wisdom and knowledge until you actually do something with it. You can be the most knowledgeable, wise person on the planet, but if you don't do anything with it, there is no power in it. It's actually um, completely worthless until you do something with it. And as I said before, you have a very unique body of knowledge and wealth of knowledge within your brain that you can use to create whatever you want to create. And there is so much to learn and remember that you never stop learning. I think the day you stop learning is the day you die. I am constantly hungry for more and more information. I'm constantly improving my own level of knowledge. But then I go and share it. When I learn it, I share it so other people can know it. Because this, the information that I learn, I wasn't born with all this stuff in my head. I learnt it. And the more I learn, the more I share, the more effective I am, the more I can teach, the more lives I can change, the more I change my own life with the knowledge that I'm learning. But this is also about connection to universal intelligence. There is nothing, no knowledge, no information, no wisdom that is do does not exist within the realm of universal intelligence. The biggest body of knowledge ever, ever, ever. Future, past and present is all within universal intelligence and once you connect into that, everything is possible. We learn through various mediums here. We learn through reading, through webinars, through workshops, through interaction with others. We learn through our relationships. Um, we learn through our relationship with the environment, we learn through our relationship with ourselves, we learn through these different mediums, but the information itself is still coming from universal intelligence. It's just that we are connecting with it through those mediums and remembering the source that we came from. Because remember, that's where we came from. We came from universal intelligence. So it's just about us remembering that. And then activating that within our lives, using it to be the billionaire. That's where your billions lie, is within that intellectual wealth. And do not for a moment say, I don't know enough, because that is just the biggest, one of the biggest lies ever. It's second to that the, the lie that you are separate from what you want. Okay. The next one is spiritual wealth, of course. Six and a half billion people on the planet, there are six and a half billion different types of spirituality and spiritual wealth. It is who we are. For me, spiritual wealth is my mind, body, spirit connection. It is my um, continuing unfolding of my connection to all that is. It is my self-realization. It is me stepping into who I truly am, my truth, the truth that I am an infinite being of light with infinite power and potential. Am I yet there yet? No. Do I have it done yet? No. With the day that I haven't done, have it done is the day I die. 
we are all a work in progress. And I still, my Lord, I still feel like I haven't even stepped onto the ladder yet. I'm that, I have that much to learn and that much to grow. And, you know, um, I want to be able to connect with my truth 24 7. And that's a journey, that's constant practice. But you have a unique version of your own spirituality. You need to express that in the world. For the world to be a richer place, you need to express who you are, your truth, your spiritual self to the world and you will make the world a better place. Because once you connect with who you truly are, then you are richer and when you are richer, the world is richer. Okay, now the granddaddy of the all, the ultimate state of wealth is whoop, next is holistic wealth conscious wealth it is a state of being not a state of having it is coming from the inside out all of these other six states come into balance when you come from a state of holistic wealth so you can try and juggle all of these or you can come from a state of conscious wealth which is what i'm all about a state of holistic wealth because as I mentioned before you can have the most you can have billions but if your health is out of balance what do you have you have an unbalanced life you have an unbalanced state of wealth you don't have a true state of wealth if your relationships are crap then again it's lonely it's depressing it's sad you have grief you have conflict that's no way to exist. That's no way to have true wealth. So when you come from the inside out, and I really want you to get this, when you are coming from a state of conscious wealth, you do not breathe, you are breathed. You do not seek financial wealth, you allow wealth, the state of wealth, to express itself through you. Conscious wealth is a state of being. You don't resist and fight your emotions. You allow your emotions to effortlessly express themselves through you with no resistance, no fight, no denial, no condemnation, no blame, no suffering. When you are consciously wealthy, you will be in relationship with yourself wholly totally, emotionally, there's no negative, toxic, blame, shame, guilt, there's none of that. This is a state of being that is the ultimate state of being. You will find that your intellectual wealth will just be, your wisdom will be so incredibly vast, it will just be who you are. All these states will become who you are. They're not something that you seek, something you have to work for. This is what I'm about. This is what I want you to experience. This is what I strive for on a constant basis. And this is what, through the, the practices that I do, the EFT and the sound healing and all the rest of it, this is what I strive to help to bring to the world. Because when you are coming from this place, the world takes on a, it is a good, different place. The world is a different place when you come from this place. Okay, I'm going to shut up now because I've been talking non-stop for two hours and it feels like five minutes. God, I love doing this. Um, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> I hope you're all still with me. I hope you're all still engaged. Um, well, I want to check in with you. So, look, take um, a few minutes. We'll come back at 11 o'clock. Take a few minutes to just digest what we've been going over. You probably have tons of questions. Please go to the question box, type in your questions. The more you interact with me, the better this is because um, I can give you all the knowledge in my head, but you probably have questions that I'm not going to answer. So ask them now. Now's your opportunity. Ask away while I'm here and engaged. Um, and then we're going to go into your blueprint, your plan, your nine-step process. So just excuse me for a moment while I um, take a sip of water. 
Um, I'm just going to put myself on mute for a minute. Okay, that's better. Um, so, um, look, great that you're all still with me. Thanks for hanging in there. I know that once I get on this, I just, you know, I'm incessant. I'm just so passionate about this stuff. I love it. I hope I'm not boring you. I hope I'm giving you great information. Please give me feedback. If I'm, you know, if, if you're not enjoying it, tell me. Tell me if I'm, and, and tell me why so I can fix it. Uh, but if you are enjoying it, please let me know. Um, and as I said, ask me questions. Uh, if <clears throat> um, if you are if you didn't get to the live presentation and you're listening to this recorded, and you need to take a break, then now would be a good time. We'll be back in a few minutes. Um, okay, that's great. Thanks for the thanks for the feedback, Mel. That's wonderful. Nice to hear. When you allow your emotions to surface in order to process and let go, are you vibrating those emotions in a way that they will return? Or is that when you choose to change it and feel joy and therefore change the vibration? The thing that allowing your emotions um, does is it actually change, changes the nature of the vibration. So all of a sudden, it's not something that feels so negative, so um, so uncomfortable. When you actually accept it, it transforms the vibration of it. So, for instance, okay, great, great story. Um, as I said in the beginning, recently um, we had to put down our Rottweiler. Now, um, as you know, if, if you do know a bit about me, I don't have children. I've chosen not to have children actively. Um, I didn't want to have kids. I love animals. I really connect with animals. And I love having animals in my life. I've had um, horses previously. Um, we had circumstances that... Um, a number of years ago, we moved to Sydney and I couldn't take my horses with me. So um, now having moved back to Queensland, we're looking for a property now and I'm going to get back into horses again because I miss them. But I, at the moment, I have my dogs. And my dogs are my kids. And um, my Rottweiler was a part of my family. I'm getting a, a little bit teary just thinking about him because um, I just... I immerse myself in my dogs. That I've got one under my feet, Blizzard. The foster dog is under my feet, asleep at the moment. Um, and you know, we've got um, a foster failure, little Charlie, who was a cattle dog. Um, we fostered him, and um, he never left. <laughs> and of course, my Labrador that I got from the RSPCA eight years ago, beautiful, beautiful dog. And I was the day that we had to put my Rottweiler down. That I have a mobile vet, and here comes the rain again. And I think it's actually going to be quite loud this time. And um, when the vet arrived, um, we we talked, and I tried to talk around ways to actually not have to do it, to not put him down, to find a solution. But we had exhausted all possibilities. He was on the way out, like it or not. And he got the what we call the green dream. He got the needle out and he filled it up and he was ready to put him down. And I just went, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I sent the vet away. And he's looking at me going, you need to do this for the, for the sake of this dog. You need to put him down. I'm like, no, I can't do it. Of course, an hour and a half later, I had to call him back and say, you have to come and put him down. So I actually sat and I sang. I sang light language to him while I was waiting for the vet. And while the vet was putting him down, I sang light language and I cried. Of course I cried. But what was extraordinary, I had never experienced this before. I have had to put some animals down and it's and I've been incredibly sad and incredibly grief stricken. I've never experienced this before in my life. While I was sitting there 
singing, crying, all at the same time, just desperately not wanting him to go, and he went. At the moment he passed over, excuse me, I'm going to cry. At the moment he passed over, I felt his joy and I felt his relief and I felt him say thank you. I felt it in every fibre and cell of my being. He just went, thank you. I had given him the greatest gift I could have given him in that particular moment. And I'm crying now because of the joy that I felt, not because of the sadness. This is actually the joy that I felt that came from him. So at the same time, I was experiencing grief and sadness because I was losing one of my kids, one of my best friends. I also felt his joy and it came through me. So I experienced that incredibly powerful joy and relief and release through from him it came through me and I experienced sadness and grief and joy all at the same time. It was so profound. And you know three days later I said to Laurie, I feel really, really guilty and he looked at me and said, why? I said, because I don't feel any grief anymore. You know, before when I put dogs down, gosh, I'd felt grief stricken for up to six months, even a year. I'd still cry over losing my, my best friend. But three days after he was gone, I missed him, yes. I missed not having his presence. He's a Rottweiler. He's a big thing to miss. He was 60 kilos. But um, I didn't feel a sadness that he wasn't there. Within three days, I had processed all my grief and all my sadness. It was gone. I didn't have to stay stuck in it. It was just the most wonderful experience for me. And you can do the same with all of your emotions. And when you allow that to happen, you actually transform those emotions into joy. That's where the joy is. It's allowing the emotion to process, to be, to do what it needs to do, and then transform into joy. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And yes, it is choosing it. It is choosing it. Uh-oh. We have a storm coming, guys. Um, okay, that changes things a bit. 